Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to our buddy Triox, who says he's glad he rediscovered EPN again. Used to watch us on TV every chance he got, and he's very happy that we've got this real passion for good reporting. Thank you very much for your very kind words, Triox. This rundown is all yours. The new Blade Runner movie is looking pretty sweet. Earlier today, during a live Q&A, stars Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling and director Denis Villeneuve presented the first full trailer for Blade Runner 2049. The film takes place 30 years after the original, with Gosling playing an LAPD officer who uncovers a dark secret that leads him to track down Ford's Rick Deckard, who has been missing since the end of the first movie. The story will explore in more detail the way the human-like replicants are exploited as cheap labor by mankind, with Ford saying that it will deal with the ethical considerations that technology presents for society. Like the original, it will also have plenty of trippy sci-fi visuals with all the flying cars, neon signs, holographic ladies, and Atari logos that you could want. Blade Runner 2049 lands in theaters on October 6th. It looks like gamers just can't get over Blizzard's latest game, Overwatch. In their latest earnings statement, Activision Blizzard has revealed that the new online shooter has now earned more than a billion dollars in revenue, making it the eighth billion dollar franchise in the Activision Blizzard library. Overwatch first launched on the PC and consoles a year ago and has since racked up 30 million players globally, making it one of the fastest growing games in history, although it hasn't topped the 70 million registered players for Blizzard's free-to-play card game Hearthstone. Blizzard is planning to support Overwatch with new characters and other content for years and even decades to come, which shouldn't surprise anyone given the lasting success of their other franchises, Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. The world could always use more heroes. It's not all good news for Activision Blizzard. In the same financial statement, the publishing giant admits that their latest Call of Duty game, Infinite Warfare, didn't sell as well as its predecessors, causing their overall year-over-year -year numbers to be down. From the day the game was announced, fans were very vocal about their displeasure with the game's outer space setting, preferring something more down-to-earth. Activision hopes to turn things around with the next game, Call of Duty World War II, which returns the franchise to its Nazi-killing roots. The first trailer is already getting a more positive reception, which is sure to make Activision very happy. The new game deploys on November 3rd. And that's not the only new Call of Duty action that Activision has in the works. After weeks of rumors, Activision has officially announced Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Chronicles. It's a new map collection for 2015's Black Ops 3 that brings together eight classic zombie maps from three last-gen Call of Duty games, World at War, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2, remastering all of them with better visuals and audio. The Zombies maps were first introduced in World at War and have since become one of the most popular aspects of the series, so it's no surprise that Activision wants to revisit their undead origins. Zombies Chronicles isn't standalone, though. You'll need to own a copy of Black Ops 3 in order to get the remastered maps, and they aren't included in that game's season pass. They'll be available May 16th as a timed exclusive on the PS4. Here's some cool news that's sure to get shooter fans quaking. Id Software and Bethesda have announced that their new online shooter Quake Champions will be getting a large-scale tech test later this week. Unlike the closed beta that took place last month, the tech test will be open to anyone who wants to play. All you need to do is sign up on the game's official website. The tech test will begin on Friday, May 12th and run until Sunday, May 21st, with the servers remaining live the entire time. Players will also be able to try out the new 4 vs 4 team-based sacrifice mode, which wasn't included in the beta, and there also won't be a non-disclosure agreement, so you'll be able to stream your gameplay if you want. Quake Champions is the first all-new game in the series in more than a decade, and like the recent reincarnations of other id Software franchises, Wolfenstein and Doom, it promises to recreate the classic feel of the original. It will have in-game microtransactions, and Bethesda's hoping that it will capture some of the success of similar online shooters like Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch. The final version of Quake Champions is expected to arrive later this year. The NBA 2K series is hitting the court like never before. 2K Sports has announced that NBA 2K18, the latest in their annual basketball series, will arrive on September 19th and land four days early for those who pre-order. It will be available on the usual PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and the thing that makes this one unique is that it will also be the first in the series to come to the Nintendo Switch. A modified NBA 2K game appeared on the Switch in the console's first announcement video back in October, and Nintendo hopes that bringing big third-party franchises like NBA 2K to the system will help establish its credit ability among gamers. The last time the franchise hit a Nintendo console was NBA 2K13 on the Wii U, but 2K Sports and many other publishers quickly abandoned that platform. 
Nintendo doesn't want the same thing to happen to the Switch, and the huge sales for the console so far are obviously helping to win back publishers. It turns out that if a game is too hard, you can complain, and the developers will make it easier. The survival horror game Outlast 2 is getting a little easier to play. In the latest patch on the PC, developer Red Barrels has tweaked the normal difficulty level, making key areas and moments easier for players. They say they did this after receiving feedback from the community saying that the game is just too hard and they hope the patch will make things more balanced. For you hardcore players, the good news is that the hard and nightmare difficulty levels haven't been touched, so they'll still be just as challenging as ever. The advent of online gaming and digital downloads has made it easier for developers to make adjustments to their games after launch, something that was impossible a couple of decades ago. That wraps up our rundown for today. We are hard at work working on tomorrow's rundown, so please come back and join us for that. In the meantime, we've got lots of other great EP content for you to check out. If you dig it, hit subscribe, okay?